All right, let's say you've made some text to video characters in a tool like Runway or Xeroscope, and you want to make them speak AI generated dialogue. Wow, that sounds pretty cool, actually. I'm going to show you how to do that with Eleven Labs and Wave to Lip. If you need to know how to write prompts to generate consistent characters, I've done a tutorial about that, and the link is in the description. One thing I like to do to start is create a spreadsheet so I can tell which piece of dialogue goes with which MP4 file. You don't have to do this, but I think it makes things easier later on. So I have my three clips. Here's the Robin clip. And then here's the wide shot of Matilda. I wanted to see if it could pick up a face that's kind of um, smaller in the frame and then a close up. So what we're gonna do is generate the dialogue for each of those clips. So we're gonna go to 11 labs. I've already created some voices that I'm gonna use, but if you're doing this for the first time, you could click add generative or cloned voice and they give you different ways to do it. If you don't wanna play around with it too much, you can go to the voice library and choose one from their community and just kind of see what they're like. If you use voice design, all of the samples that you create will start to pull away from your the characters that you have allotted. So it kind of eats up your credits, not that much, but it does. So just something to be aware of. I have one that I've used from the voice library and another one that I've designed myself. So this is Robin the Time Traveler. I'm just gonna click this Use button. I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet with all of the dialogue, copy the dialogue from A1 and paste it into 11 labs. Under voice settings, you'll see two different options. One is stability and the other one is clarity and similarity enhancement. And you can read these things and they'll tell you what they are. But basically what I have found most successful is going far right on the clarity and similarity enhancement. So it sounds like the voice that you originally wanted to use. And then going kind of to the left here in the teens maybe um, on stability. And that gives you a lot more inflection and a lot more variability. I do think it starts to sound a little more monotone as you go over to the right. Um, so let's just see how this one sounds. I'm going to generate it. Wow, looks like she's a bit of a hoarder. So perfect. That sounds good. Um, and then there's going to be another one here. I'm what you might call, I'm what you might call a time traveler. Let's see how this one sounds. I'm what you might call a time traveler. Where do all these go? So you can download these at, um, right here by clicking this button, or you can go to your history and you can just see them here and download them this way, which is what we're going to do in a minute. Now we're going to switch over and do Matilda's dialogue. I can just go here to this drop down and choose Matilda. So I'm going to open this voice settings and you'll see that it's, it's relative to each voice. So these settings don't stay through as you're changing voices. It's sort of like every voice has its own voice settings. It's just something to be aware of. So the first thing she says is this. Who are you and what are you doing in my house? All right, so now we're going to go to the history tab. We're going to check all of these boxes here um, and then just say download selected. So it downloads the zip file. We're going to put that in the same folder with everything else. When we extract this in this history folder, it's going to give us the files for each character's dialogue. I like to rename the MP3s based on their location in the spreadsheet. So A1 is this bit of dialogue and then the character name. So I can really quickly tell without looking at the spreadsheet who's talking. I know this seems really nerdy, but if you're doing a longer project, it's really helpful for keeping track of everything. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is sync up the generated video with the generated audio. And we're gonna use Wave to Lip to do this. If you Google Wave to Lip, you'll probably come to this GitHub page it's about three years old, so we're gonna go use this updated collab notebook, which is the link here. And the first thing you'll notice is they're like, actually this one works better, so we're gonna use the one that works better. Now that we've got this collab notebook, the first thing we wanna do is copy to drive. So click copy to drive. This will copy it over to our own Google Drive. So the first thing we need to do is just set up Wave to Lip, and all we have to do is click this button here, this play button and it's gonna run some code and we're just gonna wait patiently while it does what it needs to do. Okay, we know it's done when we get a little green check mark here and it says it took me 48 seconds to run this code. We're gonna scroll down. So the first thing we'll see is lip sync YouTube video. We're gonna ignore that because we don't have a YouTube video that we're lip syncing. We're gonna lip sync our video file. There's a method here that says upload and if I click this, it doesn't really do anything that might be confusing. You have to click this play button and once you click that, you'll see there's a choose files button. So I'm going to choose files and I'm going to choose Robin. So it uploads the Robin MP4. And when I see this video, now I'm going to go here to step three and choose the audio file. 
I click play so then I can see the choose file button and I'm going to choose a one Robin. That's uploaded. I see this little play bar media bar here. So I see my video and I see the audio that I'm going to do. Um, and the next step is to just step four, crunch it. Okay. And then we have the final video here. You can see it's a two second video and it took 57 seconds to encode. So it's about a minute for two seconds of video um, based on that. This is a really important part of this process. Um, before we do the next one, we have to make sure that we save this and you can either right click this and save the video as, um, or you can go to this folder here, choose wave to lip results and then result voice MP4. And you can just double click that and it will save that to your downloads folder. It always gets overwritten here in the results folder, but it won't get overwritten here. It'll just add a number at the end, but you have to make sure you do this because if you don't, when we generate the next one, this file is going to get overwritten and we don't have access to it anymore. So to do the next one, I'm going to go back up to this step two. I'm going to click the play button here, which will give me this choose files button again. And this time I'll choose the Matilda wide shot and I'll choose Matilda's first voiceover. Now that this player has come up and I have the video, I'm going to hit step four. So there you go. And then just remember every single time you have to download it or go to this folder, wave to lip results, result voice. As you can see, now I added this one's clip 15. So just continue this process for all of the MP4 and MP3 files that you have, combining them, and then taking all of those clips, bring them into the video editor of your choice and put your movie together. Who are you and what are you doing in my house? I'm what you might call a time traveler. Like the Jules Verne novel. Apologies, I actually mean the H.G. Wells novel. I get those two confused all the time. Does that ever happen to you? No, never. I was friends with both of them. I hope this has been helpful. If you can imagine it and you can type it, then you can make it. Have fun. Go make something weird with AI video.